Looks like you're off the hook today, Jan. Well, Gloria's not here. Not yet. It's not yet. Gloria's birthday was yesterday, so we would have invited Gloria, you know, to pick the sending hymn. <laughs> oh. Ha, she could still do it if she's watching online. <laughs> we'll have to. You'll have to alert me, Arlene, for sure, if you're, if you're going to watch online this morning, <laughs> if Gloria happens to come online. <clears throat> if you notice the uh, fountain up front, that was from last Sunday. Test, test. As in this year A in the lectionary of Lent, there's a lot of images and themes of water. Last Sunday's lesson, the gospel text, was the woman at the well. So we had that for woman at the well. And then this Sunday, the image with the water is the healing of the blind man and after Jesus puts mud after Jesus spits in the dirt that makes a mud paste to put on the blind man's eyes then he tells him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. So that's why we'll have to follow it for today. Okay, it looks like most people of our mind have come online for announcements this week. We are continuing with the Wednesday midweek Lenten services, and Peace is hosting it this Wednesday. We serve soup at 6.15, followed by worship at 7. And we definitely invite people to come beforehand to help with setup. And I think we have five soups right now. If you're really dying to make a soup, we would gladly accept another soup. And then uh, help with cleanup afterwards. We'll have all those soup bowls to clean up. <laughs> you know what I'm looking at, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that is this Wednesday. Then then we'll finish up the last Latin service midweek in Port Point. And we'll see if there's a snowstorm for that one. Hopefully not. It's a good thing we did the seasonal affective disorders series. Because, <laughs> uh, man, this winter is dragging on. I invite you for the start of this worship service to open up to page, actually, 279. And we are going to start out with Thanksgiving for baptism. And if you notice, what we are starting out with on page 279 is the liturgy for a funeral. And in a Lutheran funeral, the first thing you open up with is the Thanksgiving for baptism. And whether it's the casket or the urn, to start that service before we do the liturgy is we place what we call a funeral pall, the white cloth over the casket or the urn. And again, that is a sign that that person has been clothed in baptism with Christ. 
So I invite us for this Thanksgiving for baptism today uh, to follow this liturgy. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. The Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. I invite you now to pray with me the prayer of our day and follow me your Lord. Gracious Lord, touch us so that we are utterly changed, that we may also say, One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. Lord, we believe. Come, our own believe. In Christ's light we pray. Amen. We are starting out right away with the gospel text this morning. And I do invite you to take out the Bibles. The assigned reading for today in the lectionary is the uh, John chapter 9. The entirety of it, which is 41 verses. And so I think it would be just easier because of the length of this passage is that as we read through John chapter 9, I'll be making comments as we go, just because of the length of this reading. And things I want you to note in this reading, again, this is the healing of the man who weren't blind. And one thing I want you to look for and listen for that as the passage moves on, notice how the blind man is going to be moved to faith. It's his story of moving from blindness to sight, more than just physical sight. The Holy Gospel according to John, the ninth chapter. And again, before we start this reading, I think that this John 9 story is one of the most important stories for our time. And I'll tell you why again, but I want you to keep that in mind also. And I'm just going to back up a few verses, so I'm going to start with the last verse there in chapter 8. Jesus has been talking. They're very upset with him. The Judeans. And so they picked up stones to throw at Jesus, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. So put yourself right now in Jesus' mindset. He's in the temple, and they have just been wanting to stone him to death. He's able to get out. Now Jesus was walking along. He saw a man lying from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while in his day, night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When Jesus had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the slime and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, 
which means sinners. So can you imagine this guy? Jesus has saliva in the dust. So he's trying to find the pool of saliva, which is in Jerusalem. And I bet you nobody even noticed. Nobody even noticed this guy walking around with mud on his eyes. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a man began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, it's someone like him. But he kept saying, I am the man. He was a blind man, and I bet you nobody took the time to notice him. And that's why they have to have this debate. Well, is that the guy or not? They had to him. But they kept asking him, then how are your eyes open? And he answered, the man called to Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Simon and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. And they said to him, where is he? I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now notice in your Bibles, this says the Pharisees investigate the healing. <clears throat> it's really more like they're going to interrogate the blind man. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. And the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud in my eyes and I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees says, this man, they're talking about Jesus now, is not from God. For he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said once again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The blind man said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son? who you say was born blind, how then does he see now? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is now that he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Judeans, for the Judeans had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. This guy is still being utterly rejected. Imagine that. I mean, his parents, they don't even want to really acknowledge him. No responsibility for their son. He is utterly rejected, I believe, when you're rejected by your parents. Therefore, his parents said, he is a big answer. So for a second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. Remember, they're talking about Jesus. The blind man answered, no one is blind. I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. Do you hear a hymn in that? Did you hear it? One thing I know, I was one blind and now I see. That is where Isaac Watts got his line for the amazing, um, amazing grace hymn. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I already told you and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? <clears throat> that made him really angry. Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a blind or a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. 
they answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us. And they drove him out. Again, he has been utterly rejected. He's been thrown out of the synagogue, away from his community. What good is it for him now that he has a sight? At least before he could fade. He doesn't even have that left to him now that he has a sight and he has been thrown out of the synagogue. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may trust in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. It gets better for the man born in the morning. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not may see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? <clears throat> Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, we see your sin remains. Now keep your Bibles open. Because this is what is hard about this passage in the past is that you notice that the reading has ended. All readings in the Lent are this color purple and Jesus has not stopped talking. He's still talking. But we won't read this passage again until we're in year eight, until the fourth Sunday of Easter. But we need to hear Jesus keep talking because the man born blind is with the Pharisees, so we all need to hear what Jesus has going to say now. And I won't read through all of this, but the passage is Jesus the Good Shepherd. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and abandoned. <clears throat> He's talking about the Pharisees. But the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. They follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger. I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. I am the gate. And then in 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And then at the top there, verse 16, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. And that is exactly what the man born blind did. He didn't know who Jesus was, but he heard his voice when he was blind. The first thing he heard was Jesus' voice. And Jesus has now brought him into his fold. He's been restored to the community with Jesus. Now notice there in verses 19 through 21, those are verses we never read in church. But this is how we know this passage was meant for the man born born. Again, the Jews were divided because of these words. Many of them were saying, he has a demon, it is out of his mind. Why listen to him? Others were saying, these are not the words of the one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? This was all meant to be read together. Jesus, the good shepherd. So we started today's service with Thanksgiving for Baptism from the funeral service. And I said that this passage from John is so, I believe, incredibly important for us to hear today. So what if we lived a life <clears throat> with the end <clears throat> in view and we live it in reverse? 
think about all the realities and truths that you want to hear. Say you, when the time comes, are at home or in the hospital, and we know that hearing is the last thing to go. It will be, I must imagine, wonderful comfort to have people around you singing. And if they know amazing grace from heart, and they're in that moment in time, and they can surround you, and they can sing amazing grace, And think about a funeral for your children, your grandchildren, many friends, family. That when they do come to funerals, most often they are going to hear the 23rd song, The Lord is My Shepherd. Oftentimes, Amazing Grace will be sung. The Lord's Prayer in a Lutheran funeral will be said. The Thanksgiving for Baptism. For people who are not in a, a church community of this full, they will at that time in their lives hear most likely again Amazing Grace in the 23rd Psalm. But you guys are in the full, and you don't know you do know these things. And you can live fully with a lifelong encounter with the shepherding Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Surely goodness and mercy, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Because at some point, all of us are going to be the blind man. When we are thrown out of the fold, and that would be called death. But we know that death does not have the last word, and that we are not going to be thrown out, and that the good shepherd will be there waiting to receive us. Amen. I invite you <clears throat> in your bulletins to recite with me Psalm 23. Uh, it is the King James Version. There's just something uh, beautiful about the poetry of the 23rd Psalm and the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup well of gold. I invite you to sing The Lord is My Shepherd, hymn number 778.
for our online congregation. I will say, in God's house forevermore. And I invite you to respond with, our dwelling place shall be. In God's house forevermore, our dwelling place shall be. Jen, I was going to have you continue to plan that. God, our faithful shepherd, we depend on you for everything we need, for daily food, for guidance and protection, for healing and injury and comfort and sorrow. You respond in abundant provision. In God's house forevermore.
This is my body given for you. Do this for the women and so on. Again, I'm for some, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all the great saints. This cup, new covenant in my blood, shed for you for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the women and so on. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray the prayer of your Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom comes, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. For us who stay our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. When we eat this bread, we share the body of Christ. We are members of this whole. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
So there's no way I could make that work that well perfectly. We all finish the way right there. Um, before we do the benediction, oh. the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his eternal life. Before the benediction, um, yeah, there's like that 10 second delay. Um, I see that Gloria was online. So, Gloria, I know you're out there listening if you haven't signed off already. And uh, it was your birthday yesterday. And it is our tradition here at Peace. If you want to uh, send in the comments or text it to our meeting, uh, if you're able, what you would like to hear for your uh, hymn today. Jan is breathlessly waiting. <laughs> I don't know if this technology will work then. Uh, it's like phone or friend, right? <laughs> I guess I could just pick my phone and call her. Oh, maybe you type it in. We have to be able I wouldn't answer either. Hey, hey Bill, can I talk to Gloria? <laughs> Happy birthday, Gloria. So what, what song would you like us to sing for you? I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Okay, thank you, Gloria. I knew it. I knew it. <clears throat> Gloria's hymn is Just As I Am, and I knew that. I figured you would. So, what hymn number is that? 592. 592. Yep, just as I am without one plea. And. Are we going to sing it now? Yep. <laughs> we won't do um, my first voice. Oh, okay. We won't do that. We said we'll sing Gloria, just as I am without one plea. I invite you to sing.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.